Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers 32. Now the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, had a very great multiple, multitude of cattle, moo, cowboys. And you're going to see this in Gen back in Genesis 13.10 with Lot. The story repeats. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. That's Lot. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar, the priests, and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, So they come to the head of the authority. Ataroth and Dibon and Jazer and Nibroth and Heshbon and Elihah and Sheba, Bam, and Nebo and Beon. Even the country which the Lord smoked before the congregation of Israel. What did the land, where did they just battle in Numbers chapter 31? The Midianites. The Midianites. What had happened in the Israel history there in the Midianites? PR. And remember the, all the, 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 all the cows, the beeves they got? Here they are. So they are in the land, and before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Now here we go, we got the golden calf. It's not a statue, but we're looking for out for our cows. Oh, our cows. We are going to blasphemy and disobey God, and we'll see that in a minute, for our cows. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. That's where God wanted them. God did not want them on the eastern side of Jordan. He wanted them on the other side. And you cannot say there's no room for these two tribes and a half because Judah sucks in to his area, I forget which tribes are there, Benjamin, and there's a couple of other tribes. They just suck into that land because the you know, land is so full. The land that God prescribed for them, the land of Palestine, the milk of honey in that land could fit all 12 tribes, but we're not going to go in, these two and a half tribes. They picture the carnal Christian. They are the children of God. They are of the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They got the family mark. But we're not going to cross and settle where God wants. We're going to live on the other side and see what, how Moses reacts now. And Moses said unto the children of Gad, unto the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war and shall ye sit here? Now, I don't know if this is what Gad and Reuben and half the tribe of the Manassas are thinking of. They just come, hey, we're going to stay here. And Moses is like, you're going to stay here? You're going to let your brethren go and fight? You're supposed to cross. Wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord has given them. So see, Moses repeats exactly what God said. But notice how he says them. He's already 
you're out of the picture. You've already got your heart set. And there's some weird verses in here, a couple of them. Thus did your fathers, when I sent them from Canish Barnea to see the land. Those are the 12 spies. They went into the land. We know the story. Ten of them came back and said, we can't do it. We can't do it. Oh, let's go back to Egypt. And when these Gad and Reuben and the tribe and Manasseh comes in, they're doing the same thing. We don't want to go in the land. Now, that's not red flags for Israel. I don't know what it is. Thus did your fathers, when I sent them from Carnesbia to see the land. For when they went up unto the valley Eskel and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should, go, that they should not go in the land of Egypt. No markers? Shall not go, discourage the heart of the children of Israel that they should go, not go into the land which the Lord has given them. And Reuben, Gad, and Half Tribe, and that, well, they're not saying everybody not go in, just us. And everybody else is going to rumor and, and think and what's going on, why, what's the problem, how come. Now, watch that. All right, so verses 1. Through five, death, is the children of Reuben, Gad, and half tribe Manasseh. Verses six on to nine is Moses' reaction. It's not good. The Lord's anger was kindled at the same time, and he swears, saying, There was still in case being Barnea, the, the story thereof, and now we're looking at God's attitude back then. Surely none of the men that came out of Egypt. From twenty years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Everyone from a certain age above twenty died in the wilderness for forty years because they did not want to go in the land. What are you guys doing? By saying you want to stay on this side and you don't want to go in the land. Like those ten spies. Say Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua the son of Nun. For they have wholly followed the Lord. Only two of those men out of all those people in the wilderness. Two of them. Did not die in the wilderness. That was above that age. They're going in. He is now your leader, Joshua. He's the commander leader that's going to ride them into battle across that Jordan River. And you're telling them two and a half tribes are not going to go with them. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel. Verse 13. And he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years unto all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord. Have, I mean, excuse me, was consumed. You know what Moses fears? Oh, no, another 40 years. Moses is ready to die. Because when we read in chapter 31, verse 2, Avenge the children of Israel and the Midianites. Afterwards, thou shalt be gathered unto thy people. And Moses is looking now. We, we battled... He's either thinking he's going to live 40 more years in the wilderness. Or he's thinking Joshua's going to have to go through 40 years in the wilderness well, after I'm dead. Because of what you two are doing, the, the two tribes in the half. Moses has a fear. Moses is giving them history. What had happened already. And he gives precise history to what has happened. And they're repeating it, and America has changed, the world has changed history, so you don't know what's going to happen. you got a false pretense. And he's reminding them, you remember that 40 years until your entire family, kindred, band, everybody, remember how they dropped dead in the wilderness for those 40 years? Remember that? Well, my God, you're doing it again. 
You're going to do it again. And behold, verse 14, ye are risen up in your father's stead. Woo -hoo. Moses about had it with them. God had about had it with them. And the Bible, it meant preachers always preach that God and the Lord ever got angry with Israel together. Moses, Moses and God got angry together. That would have been it of them. Moses is teed off. He did not get to go in the land because that 40 years wilderness and he smoked that rock. Had those had those spies come back and say, let's go get them like Caleb said. And Joshua said, let's go kick some giant butt. Moses would have been in there. Aaron would have been in there. Miriam would have seen the land. And who knows about his father and maybe his mother. I don't know. It doesn't mention when they ever died. Moses watched 40 years of people's wasted lives. He is a preacher. He is sad about his congregation. They died unwillingly, never made it to the land. Here we are. We are at the Jordan River. We, the Jericho's over there. And now you have the nerve to say, we're staying here. That's remarkable. This picture is a church. you got saved people in the church. And there are saved people. They're going out. They're preaching. They're doing what God wants them to do. And there's people in the congregation at church saying, no, we're just staying right here. We're not going to go any further. We're not going to do nothing. And that gets the preacher upset. Because the full potential of everybody going in that land. And let's read on. Verse 14, he's, he tells me, he salts them, but the truth. Increase sinful men to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord towards Israel. All they want to do is stay. That's not what they were told to do. They were told to go into the promised land. For if ye turn away, that's re, that is reverse of repenting. This is a wrong repent. From after him, God, he will yet again leave you in the wilderness, and ye shall destroy ye shall destroy and ye shall destroy all this people. Now that ends Moses. Moses ends off with them, you're gonna cause them to go 40 years in the wilderness again, and you're gonna kill them. Boom, I'm done. Let it be on your shoulders. <laughs> That's what he says. And they came near unto him after being blasted. Good to have a faithful Moses. Now this is a compromise. We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle. We're going to build sheepfolds for cattle. Interesting. You're going to have the cattle mix in with the sheep. And cities for our little ones. Notice how that little ones keeps coming up. Pharaoh said, oh, leave your little ones here. You can't send them out there, but we can kill them here. And then they told Moses, after the spies had come back, oh, our little ones, they're going to blah, blah, blah. Here's the little ones again. But we ourselves will go ready, armed before the children of Israel, until we have brought them onto their place. It's not our place, it's their place. So I'll tell you what we'll do, Moses. Kick in the sand. We'll go in. I don't know. And I don't know if they ever thought about this until after Moses, Moses blasted them. Moses put them on the spot. Oh, oh, we got to come up with something to say. What are we going to say? Oh, we'll go with you and fight for them. But we love our land. And our little ones shall dwell in defense cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inhabited, inherited every man his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side Jordan or forward, because our inheritance is fallen to us on this side Jordan eastward, according to who? You haven't got permission yet to, to stay in that land. Your heart is already there.
That's not where you belong. Okay, now they're done speaking. Now Moses. Moses does not inquire of God at all. And he's going to make a serious mistake. And Moses said unto him, If he will do this thing, if he will go armed before the Lord the war, that's not what God said, and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he has driven out his enemies from before him, and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterwards you shall return and be guiltless before the Lord. No, 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 Moses. Here Moses is wrong. And before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. No, no, no. Now let's turn to First Chronicles five twenty six. Let's see what happens. Let's go. Let's go in the future. First Chronicles, a boring book about names. Oh, can't read Chronicles. That's so boring. First Chronicles five, and then you're going to miss something. Twenty six. Now we work at 518. Watch this. The sons of Reuben, the Gadites, the half tribe of Manasseh, valiant men. That means they're real warful. Military. Men able to bear buckler and sword to shoot with bow. Skillful in war. Alright. They're very they're, I guess they're elite military band of people. So let's look at verse 25. 525. And they transgress against the God of their fathers and went whoring after the gods of the people of the... Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like what we just read in Numbers? Midian? Midianite people? Midianite cows? Whom God destroyed before them. Doesn't that sound like the battle in 32? Maybe it's another group of people. But it sounds perfectly like it. I can't say it's absolutely minion. But let's read on. And the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul. The king of Assyria. And the spirit of tal King of Assyria. Okay. Two kings. He carried them away, even the Reubenites, the Gadites, the half-tribe of Manasseh, and brought them unto Hala, and Ahaba, and Hara, and to the river Gozen, unto this day. Now, my date here is, well, they got a weird date, 4,000 to 1. Well, let me tell you what, what, what ha what's going on here. Of all the children of Israel, the captivities. Let me tell you what the captivities. Number one is what you're reading right now. The Reubenites, the Gadites, half tribe of Manasseh go into captivity first. Then you get number two where you get Israel north. They went to captivity next by the same Assyri Assyrians. Assyria. And then number three, you got Judah. Being captive into Babylon. Manasseh, the half tribe, Reuben, and Gad are the first tribes to go into captivity. They're not even in their land. And they fall to the sins. It looks like the sins that Balaam. But at least they fall, in, uh, we know one thing, they fall into other gods. And the Bible uses the word whoring. So this tribe that says we don't want to go over, they're the first ones to go. You say goodbye bye to Gad, Reuben, and half tribe Manasseh, they're gone. So back to Numbers 32. Thirty-two, where we leave off. Uh 19. Alright, so 19. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side of Jordan or forward, because our inheritance 
is falling to us on this side, Jordan, eastward. No, it's not. And Moses said to them, if you will do this thing, if you will go armed before the Lord to war, and will go all go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord, until he has driven out his enemies from before him. And the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterwards you shall return, and be guiltless before the Lord, no, and before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord, and you go bye bye first. But now watch this verse. I said there's a couple weird verses. They don't want to go over, correct? But if you will not do so, if you will not go armed over Israel to help them, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. Now look how wonderful that we use that witnessing. Moses, the problem is with the sin is you are not staying where you are staying where God does not want you to stay. That is the sin. But he's at it with them. Build your cities for your little ones. No, don't do it. And folds for your sheep. And do that which proceeds out of your mouth. Which is all wrong, Moses. And the children of Gad and children of the Reubenites spake unto Moses, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commanded, not as what God commanded. We're going to do what Moses said. We like what Moses says. God doesn't. See, we all sin and come short of glory. Even Moses sinned. Our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all our cattle shall be there in the city of Gilead. Are there any men there? Anybody protecting his family? I see little ones and wives, but I don't see... I mean, we're going to put them in the fortified, fenced cities, but who else is there? Because Moses said, you're all going to go armed before into Israel, and you're going to leave your little ones your wife. Hopefully there's some men there, but it's not mentioned. Older men there. Yeah. They can't go to war. But by thy servants will pass over every man armed for war. So our wives, our little ones, but then it says every man armed for war before the Lord to battle, as my Lord saith. So concerning them, Moses commanded Moses commanded Eliezer the priest. Didn't ask Eliezer. Did not seek the Urim and the Purim. And Joshua the son of Nun, and the chief of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, If the children of Gad and the children of Reuben will pass with you over Jordan, I'm dying, I'm going away. <laughs> Ain't my problem. Every man armed to battle before the Lord, and the land shall be subdued before you. Then ye shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. Now when you read now on, after this point, when it divides that land between Gad, between Reuben, and half-tribes of uh, Manasseh, you know what it says? It doesn't say that God gave them. It will read and mark in your Bible, it says, the land that Moses gave them. But if they will, now watch this verse, ready? They don't want to go. But if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. They don't want it. Moses, what are you making that kind of stupid statement? You're going to force them to come in the land? You're going to be having a civil war. They don't want to go. And if you tell them, you know, they, they say, oh, we're not going to go armed. We change our mind. We'll force them to come over. No, they're not going to. That's a stupid statement. And the children gathered and the children of Reuben answered, saying, As the Lord has said unto thy servants, so we will do. So, God, we don't want to go over the promised land. We come all the way out of Egypt. When did they come out of Egypt? There's a promised land for you of milk and honey provided to Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. Oh, all the troubles in the wilderness, all the problems. Oh, we get to the river and say, no, we don't want it. What a waste. And you get Christians that live, they do right, and they come to the end of their life, and sometime before that, they say, I stop, I quit, that's it. And they never get the promises, they never get the rewards. We will pass over armed before the Lord into the land of Cana, 
that the possession of our inheritance on this side Jordan may be ours. And Moses gave unto them, even to the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, and unto the half tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, the kingdom of Amorites. So we're in Amorite territory. The kingdom of Og. Amazing how many times that guy shows up. You read more about Og than you do about Joseph, the adopted father of Jesus. He's the one that had the big bed. He's a giant. The land with the cities thereof in the coast. Even the cities of the country round about. And to the children of Gad built Devon and Hatharoth and Arir. And Hatharoth and Shophan and Jazir and Jagabetha. And Beth Nimrah, Beth Haran, fenced cities and folds for sheep. So that's what they said they were going to do. And the children of Reuben built Hishman. And Hila and Kircher Ramah and Nebo. That's an interesting Bible name. And Baal Meon. Baal. You see that name? That's not God. Their names being changed. Well, they, they did change the names. And Shibna. And gave other names in the cities which they built it. But the city's still there. Baal. Should have been burnt down. When God says you go into that promised land, you burn it all down. And the children of Micra. I mean, America kept the Indian names. Indians worship other gods. The son of Manasseh went to Gilead and took it. And dispossessed the Amorite, which was in it. So we're in Amorite territory. Not Israel, Amorite. And Moses gave Gilead. Moses gave Gilead. On Demarca the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt therein. And Jar the son of Manasseh went and took the small towns thereof, and called them Hazajar. And Nophath went and took Kenneth, and the villages thereof, and called it Nobah, after his own name. So he, you know, he just named the city after himself. That, that happened.